Planting the seeds of our future is the most important thing we can be doing. Don't you agree? And saving seeds for our future is a simple yet powerful step. Take a moment to look around your garden. The plants that are doing really well are the ones to save seeds from. Learning to harvest seeds from those special plants is easier than you think, and with a bit of instruction, anyone can become a seed-saving superstar. Let Urban Farm U teach you how in our free upcoming seed-saving webinar. Just text the word SEEDS to 33444 to sign up, or visit urbanfarm.org for more information. Remember, that's SEEDS to 33444. You're listening to the Urban Farm Podcast, your partner in the Grow Your Own Food revolution. Whether you've just been introduced to urban farming or you're a lifelong advocate, we're sure you'll leave feeling more informed, equipped, and empowered to dig deeper into the soil of your local food economy. With you every step of the way, here's your host, Greg Peterson. Today on the Urban Farm Podcast, we have Troy Albright of True Garden to talk about his experience with tower gardening. Troy is the founder of True Garden. He graduated from the University of Arizona in 1987 with a degree in pharmacy. Troy founded RX Formulations in 2002, focusing on natural bioidentical hormones for men and women, sterile IV admixture, pet compounding, and topical creams and gel consults, which has led to a more holistic, integrative approach to health, nutrition, and wellness. Troy was always aware that the missing link for most of his patients was the lack of fresh quality food in their daily diet. In 2013, Lisa and Troy Albright took matters into their own hands and founded True Garden. This first-of-its-kind facility operated by solar power was designed with a vision of drastically reducing the region's agriculture water consumption while making local, living produce available year-round in the hot desert regions of Phoenix and the southwestern U.S. Welcome to the show today, Troy. Well, thanks, Greg. I appreciate you having me on your show today. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So I shared a bit about you. Can you fill in the blanks for us and share how you got to where you're at with all of this? You know, it's been quite an exciting adventure. Um, It all started when we had kids and they had all these allergies and issues. and, And we went to this doctor, this pediatrician who didn't believe in giving drugs. And it just sort of went against what I was taught in pharmacy school. And and uh, so our pursuit was to start eating more uh, whole-type foods, natural foods, pesticide-free free foods as well. And uh, even my compound pharmacy, as I worked with patients, I saw the need for the patients to change their diets. Um, you've heard that uh, saying, you, know, you are what you eat. Oh, yes. I really believe that now, Greg. And I've seen it in my patients. And as a result of uh, pursuit of health and wellness with those patients and even my own kids, have really taken us to this point in our journey. Fantastic. So True Garden is a company that you started in 2013. And I have to tell our listeners, I was out there. This is in Mesa, Mesa, Arizona, correct? That is correct. Yeah. So I went out and visited Troy. Oh, my gosh. Probably a year ago now. And he was building this humongous, I'm going to use that word, greenhouse on the corner of <laughs> of an intersection in Mesa. And it's that's been a story in itself. So tell us about your adventure with True Garden and how it got started. You know, as we uh, looked at trying to figure out how to, to work with the community and bring, you know, whole food, uh, fresh food, food that was non-GMO, pesticide-free, herbicide, you know, fungicides, none of the synthetic stuff put on our crops. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we worked with that, we saw some prototypes of this vertical farming, and we just embraced it. We started with 10 towers and built a little greenhouse at home, and, and uh, you know, as we saw the results there, we are like, what can we do to bring this to the community so they, too, can have uh, better uh, health just through their foods they're eating, the nutrition And uh, that's when we decided to build this uh, 5,000 square foot greenhouse on the same property as where we had our holistic compound pharmacy. And that's been a process in itself. So yeah, it's exciting. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. So several things. First of all, I want to talk about your greenhouse, but before we go there, tell people what a tower garden is. Oh yes, Uh, tower garden is a form of a vertical hydroponic system. So instead of being horizontal, 
flat using where your produce or whatever you're growing is always in water. We've gone vertical and those roots are not in water. They get the air, the water, and the nutrition along with the sun. We get super growth. Plus we use 90% less water and 90% less space. So our carbon footprint is much decreased. You know, water is a commodity here in Arizona. This mm-hmm. is a desert. Oh, yeah. And we're really excited about going vertical. So our 5,000 square foot greenhouse, which is like a, an eighth of an acre, would be, be equivalent to one to two acres in the ground. It just shows you the scale by going vertical. So it's incredible, this technology that uh, Tim Blank uh, developed. And we're excited to utilize that technology here and, and bring this incredible nutritional quality of food to the Mesa area here. Wow. So let, let's just give our listeners a, a visual picture of a tower garden. So a tower is um, maybe a two foot diameter space on the ground, right? Right. It takes up two and a half square feet. Two and a half square feet. And it's a like a 20 gallon tank of water. And, the, and, then, and then the water is pumped up a tower that, how tall are your towers? The commercial towers are nine feet tall in our greenhouse, so it'll pump that water to the very top, and then there's a shower cap at the top, and then it rains down. On the so roots. So it takes the air, yeah, under the roots, and mm-hmm. that air and water nutritional solution onto the roots just causes incredible uh, growth. We get beautiful looking plants. Just amazing. I'm just amazed wow. every time I look at it myself. I'll bet. I'll bet. So you ha- how, many, how many plants are in each tower? Oh, gosh. So each tower, we have 52 living plants, and we have 320 towers in our greenhouse. Mm-hmm. So there's, that means we can grow 16,000 living plants a month. Wow. Um, there's times when we can even turn that greenhouse every 21 days, depending on what we're growing. So right. essentially, we can tur- turn our crops 17 times a year. I mean, you can't do that in soil. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's just amazing what this technology has allowed us to do. Wow. So in two and a half square feet, you can grow 52 plants. That is correct. A month. Per tower. <laughs> wow. So we have 320 towers in there, Greg. I mean, you've seen it. I mean, it's, I, I mean, we've got it uh, filled to capacity right now. So we're turning 16,000 living plants a month. And I mean, it's one of those uh, areas where you go in and you just wish you could stay there forever because it's yeah. just, uh, just an incredible, serene environment with all that living food around you. So the water goes into these towers. What kind of nutrients go in? Because I know there's always a question about, all right, what's in our food? So can we talk about the nutrients a little bit? Oh, sure, sure. The nutrient solution, there's an, an A and B uh, power growth solution that we use. Um, You've got a, an earth mineral ionic uh, solution, A, and, a, and then a B solution, that's also your C minerals. And, you know, essentially um, the USDA has said that our food only needs 16 to 25 essential minerals and nutrients. Uh-huh. Well, this solution that's been designed actually has 70-plus essential minerals and nutrients. And our food needs to have all this in it. And it used to. At one point in time it right. did, but the problem is our, our soils have been just – overworked and overused and overgrown and you know we've we're trying to feed the world and we don't have the ability to replenish our soil fast enough so this has been an incredible um a situation that's been developed to feed our plants feed them nutritionally and really uh, get some quality some good quality food mm-hmm. and you can taste the difference not only does it look beautiful but you can taste the difference wow so is it organic well, organic, we can't call it organic because we're not using soil. And uh, you right. know, it's sad because the, the organic standards are based on soil, which is carbon-based. Um, so we're calling it beyond organic, beyond organic living food. And when we go to our, to our farmer's markets and our, have our own farm stand, mm-hmm. it's actually living food. The root is still on it. So until you actually harvest it, it hasn't been harvested. It hasn't even started losing any of its nutritional value. Right. Um, do you realize that uh, the USDA has done studies showing that by the time our food gets to market, our produce, it's lost at least 50% of its nutritional value. And in some cases, the the dark greens have all lost almost 100%. Wow. I mean, it's just amazing, Greg, that you know we're even as healthy as we are yeah. because our foods are so depleted. Our I mean, you've been in this movement a long time. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, exactly. So the, the nutrients then that you're putting on are mineral-based. They're not soil-based, so we can't call them organic. That is correct. So, that is correct. Go ahead. 
So by not being in the soil, we have 70% less microbes. So we have less bugs to deal with. Mm -hmm. And that's what's even more exciting. You know, as we've had uh, our raised gardens at home, you, you, mm -hmm. there's still a place for raised gardens because yep. you need that for your root vegetables. But right. we have 70% less microbes to deal with as a result of going in this vertical aeroponic system. So microbes like the bad guys. The bad guys, yeah. yes. Perfect. So then, the, bad guys. then the nutrients though that we're putting in, those are those are natural and they're um, they're healthy for us. Right, they're very healthy for us. They're mined in their natural state. They're uh, actually mined here in the U.S., so it's not outsourced to China. Mm -hmm. I mean, this whole tower garden had to go through FDA process and become an FDA-approved device since it's being used to grow food in. So it's meeting all those standards with BPAs and all the issues you have with plastics. Right. I mean, I could go on and on about that. So uh, the Tower Garden's gone through all that testing, and uh, FDA has approved it to be used to grow food in. Wow, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So you got a picture now. It's a 5,000-square-foot greenhouse, yes? Yes, that is correct, Greg. So state-of-the-art. State-of-the-art greenhouse. So let's talk about – so we talked about the Tower Gardens. Let's talk about the state-of-the-art greenhouse because I was in it – just a few months ago, and it, it's jaw-dropping. So tell, tell us about your greenhouse. In this greenhouse, we built, you know, a typical greenhouse is either 24 or 31 feet wide. Uh -huh. Well, I wanted this to be a showpiece, so I, I had it specially made to be 44 feet wide, 108 feet long. That way you have one big span, so when you walk in there, you see our seating tables, our propagation tables. Right. We have 10 of them. So at any given time, we're growing... Uh, gosh, 4,000 seedlings at any, any given time. We're turning uh, 80 towers, which would be 4,000 plants. And so we have uh, six rows of 40 towers, or six rows of 80 towers in each wow. double row. Uh -huh. So basically 320 towers of beautiful green living produce. And just the smell of that living fresh produce is just mind-boggling yeah. uh, in there as well. So what makes the greenhouse uh, unique. So what we've gone and done is we've combined all the state-of-the-art technology. We've put in, uh, when you look at the skin of the greenhouse, we've put in this mm -hmm. uh, new product by GE, this Lexan polycarbonate, which is 10,000 pounds per square inch. I mean, it can really handle anything being uh, thrown against it. You know, it's been built to withstand 140 mile per hour winds. Mm -hmm. I mean, this Lexan glass is incredible wow. when it comes to strength. But it also diffuses this Arizona sun. I mean, since we're so close to the equator here, we get lots and lots of sun. I mean, nine months of the year is perfect growing here. I right. Mean, right now, the Arizona winter is our spring, and we should be growing our crops. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got this perfect situation to grow. So we have this beautiful light diffusing product made by GE, with Lexan, Lexan polycarbonate, that diffuses the light, which then allows any of us to work in there without ever wearing sunscreen, even in the summertime. Uh -huh. Can you imagine that? Wow. You don't have to wear sunscreen in there because it's diffusing out. It's taking those harmful rays out, but allowing the incredible rays that will actually cause the, the, the product, the green produce, to grow really, really healthy. And you mm -hmm. can see it just in its vibrant colors. So we got that Lexan glass. Then we went, and um, when you look at the exhaust fan, so we're getting a great draw through. We have a big uh, wet wall, which is incredible. So we're getting lots of air movement. Uh -huh. So we're able to cool our produce. Even during the summertime, right. we've gone and installed a microfogging system that helps lower the temperature. And then we've also put a heat shield in there as well, which can pull across. So if we do need to try to limit the cooling, if we have to, we have to cool the space, which we did have to, even though it got up to 117 degrees this year, right. this past summer, we didn't have to use any AC to cool that greenhouse. Nice. All right. And that's an incredible because when you look at Arizona, it's hard to believe that you can go and grow all these cool tempered crops in the middle of summer like this. Right. But when you think about it, you got 320 uh, reservoirs, 20 gallon reservoirs in there. That's a lot of water. So once you oh, pull yeah. that water mm -hmm. that, and then with this system, as you pump the water up to the top of the towers and it rains down, you get a lot of BTU exchange, a lot of oh, heat right. exchange, mm -hmm. which then allows you to cool that greenhouse. Um, and then the final thing we did is we painted the floor white so we can get as much reflection as possible. So we've combined all these technologies into one greenhouse, wow. uh, which was specifically designed for these tower gardens. And, uh, you know, again, I can thank Tim Blank because he actually designed this greenhouse from ground up. 
can take care of these 320 towers in our greenhouse. You know, then we have another 150 or so towers on our patio farm that we're running too. I yeah. forgot to mention that. So basically on our campus, we have close to 500 towers. Wow. So who is this Tim Blank? Yeah. Who is Tim Blank? Uh, so when you look at Tim Blank, he's the gentleman that uh, started up um, Future Growing. Um, but prior to that, he worked with NASA and they developed a similar system like this that's up in space. So for them to grow and conserve their water, they use a colossal system like this up in space. And when that project ended, Disney World hired him to come and develop all their vertical farming there. So oh, I don't know if you've ever been to the Epcot, uh, the land center, uh, the land ride. That, I haven't, at, but at I Disney hear it's World. phenomenal. Yeah, so all that vertical farming, he worked for them for 12 years and developed all this vertical farming, and they flew him all over the world. I mean, the guy is an incredible uh, genius when it comes to uh, any type of hydroponic farming, vertical farming. This guy understands it. And when he developed this tower garden system, he wanted to become bulletproof and make it simple. I mean, he simply simply used the KISS principle, keeping it simple. That way things aren't clogging, things aren't uh, breaking, because you only have one moving part, and that's right. this pump. pump. Otherwise, it's a bulletproof system, and that's what he's brought to the table here. And that's what makes it unique and allowing even the basic person that doesn't even have a green thumb, anybody can do this, even if they have a black thumb. I'm not joking. Well, not having a black thumb is simply about paying attention to your plants. That's true. Hearing them, looking at them, yeah. they'll, they'll exactly. tell you what they need. I mean, with all your fruit trees you have there, you understand that to the T. Oh, yeah. I mean, all the, uh, the plants will really tell you if they're under or over. I mean, right. it's, it's very obvious. Oh, yeah. People, people say to me, how do I know if my fruit tree needs water? It's like, look at the tree. <laughs> exactly. You know, look at the tree. What are the leaves telling you? Exactly. Yep, yep. Are the leaves wilting? Yep. Are they turning yellow? What's going on to them? Yeah. You know, the, you know, plants will talk to you. if You just have to pay attention to them. Right. So what makes True Garden unique? Well, the fact that we're doing this in an urban setting uh -huh. in the middle of the Southwest. You know, here, water is such a commodity. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of our food travels, gosh, travels 1,200 to 1,500 miles. Yep to get here so that's three to five days and then by the time it gets to the distribution center um it's another couple of days so people wonder why their food doesn't last very long well it's already been harvested yeah so what makes us unique is not only that are we in the desert here you know we're using renewable resources you know with solar power on our on our roof as well but we're actually taking produce and leaving the root on it so it's living food so until you cut it it hasn't been harvested, so therefore it's going to last a good seven to another seven to fourteen days, wow. a good two weeks in your refrigerator. Right. That's what makes it very unique. Because it's still growing. It's still growing. It's still living. It yeah. hasn't been cut. Yeah. Wow. That's just exciting. Yeah, yeah. That's that's hugely exciting. So as you can tell, I'm passionate about this. <laughs> Yay! Um, so a couple of things I want to talk about. I want to talk about Tower Farms. Um, and yes. I, so let's talk about that first and then we'll get on to the next thing. Okay. So, um, sure. you can get a tower garden through juice plus if you want one for your, uh, for your house, right? That's correct. The residential side, the rights were bought by uh, juice plus. So, uh, there's a juice plus tower garden side now. So Tim blank of future growing sold the, the residential model to juice plus and they have the rights to sell all the residential models. Uh, to anybody that wants one. And that's a really great way to do it. I mean, anybody that wants to uh, learn more about that, they can be directed towards us. Um, Perfect. You know, we have, and we can learn about that, uh, teach them about that. I mean, we're excited about what it takes to do that because we believe, just like you do, Greg, that we all should have urban farms in our backyard. Yeah. Fruit trees, raised gardens, yep. tower gardens be able to sustain ourselves and I know you've been working on that you know <laughs> most of your life most of my life yeah exactly that's your yeah and I buy I buy into that I mean when I first met you I was like I want to do this yeah. I want to be part of this local urban farm movement, movement and please. that we all can have a farm in our backyard I'm excited about doing all that perfect so um, website where they can find out more about tower gardens oh they can just go to uh, gosh uh, www.truegarden.com and we have a tab on there that talks about residential towers. Um, we all have a personal website as well, you know, where they can take them right to my personal website, which is uh, Juice Plus Tower Gardens. That's www.rxtowergarden.com. Um, 
again, we have classes. We're more than happy to keep educating people. Gosh, Greg, even when you're doing your tours out there, I'd love to be out there and yeah. having people out there to explain it to the people that come there and, and see yeah. your facility as well. Yeah, I mean, well, we'll be on site there. We can do it too. Perfect. Well, and, I, and I have a tire garden. I'm looking at it now on my back patio. I actually found out about them a month before they were released and I flipped about them. Once I saw what they were and how they worked, it was like, oh my God, I got to have one. So I've had one coming up on four years now. So I'm very excited. Right. And, and I grow every season. We've got great, uh, you know, groceries coming out of the top of it. Exactly. It's the most nutritional dense food you can grow. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. I, I get excited just looking at the towers. <laughs> and when I was out at one of your uh, shows you had there in your on your property, mm -hmm. I saw your tower and it looked great. And yeah. um, just just makes me want to keep eating more and more greens. And we'll be healthier for Yep. to do that yeah so that that's if you want a single tower garden what if you want a whole tower farm now i was in an event at your place in december of 2015 and we looked at the notion of a tower farm talk about that oh yes we had 30 potential growers across the world across the world we had yeah. people from uh ethiopia spain canada i've had people from china show up um, almost uh, a lot of the different states here, North Carolina, Colorado, mm -hmm. Alabama, Georgia. We had all these growers, some that are already growing in different types of systems, but uh, some that are looking at ways to become more water conscious, mm -hmm. you know, more low, more of that urban movement. Right. And uh, so if you want to purchase um, a micro farm, we, those start at 10 towers. Again, you can contact us. Send us uh, on our website, mm -hmm. uh, truegarden.com. Perfect. There's an info tab. You can send us, hey, I'm interested in buying a micro farm. Those micro farms start at anywhere from, gosh, $8,700 all the way up to about 12000 depending on the supplies you want. Right. But you'll get a turnkey micro farm. It'll be a turnkey farm that allows you to expand it up to at least 300 towers if you so desire. But again, it's a bulletproof system. Yeah. It doesn't have all these bells and whistles and and all these electronics that break down and all these misters that clog up, this system has been developed to be bulletproof, turnkey. And I tell you, 10, uh, 10 commercial towers, which are 11 pots tall, uh -huh. you'll be able to grow 440 plants at any given time. Wow. That's a lot of food you can produce. <laughs> That's a lot talk of about, food. Talk about sustain yourself. It is. Right. That's a lot of food. A lot of and food. And again, food. we'll assist you in that process. Uh, matter of fact, I just had, I have two micro farms sitting in house right now. So I just got them in uh -huh. and you know, we're looking at trying to sell more farms, get more people into this um, and doing it on a commercial level as well. Perfect. Yeah. That's so important to getting, getting our local food economies built out. It's so important. Exactly. I mean, I had a gentleman show up from China <laughs> who owns 100 acres in China, uh -huh. didn't speak a word of English, uh -huh. but he brought his son, who spoke incredible English. Um, I'd never heard Mandarin before in, in person, and this guy owns 100 acres. He looked just like you and me, just the everyday Joe, uh -huh. and he wants to put up 800 of my greenhouses in China oh. and grow tomatoes. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And he says that there's no good quality tomatoes that are not there's filled not. with chemicals. There's not, yeah. He goes, the food, the produce is just terrible. I mean, I heard that in Ethiopia, in Spain, I mean, I hear it in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing all these places that the food is contaminated. Right. And then we eat it. Well. And then we start having health issues. So I, we're perpetuating I, this whole health issue. And that's why I got into this. Right. And I got, it's all about health and wellness. I got news for you. What's that? The food in this country ain't all that healthy either. <laughs> no, it isn't. You know, I mean, I don't know so. if you just saw that uh, Michael Pollan pro uh, project, Defense of Food, that just came yep. out. Yeah. Incredible. Our yeah. food is just, we're, we're eating tainted food that's killing us. Right. So I want to, so the, the other piece, so I wanted to talk about Tower Farm. So thanks, thanks for that. Let's talk about the process. So you have all these tower gardens. Now you, you go out there on a Saturday morning, you get a crew in there at, four o'clock Saturday morning to harvest. What do you do with that food? Where does it go? So that food is then taken. We have a, a local farm stand on site mm -hmm. that's open Tuesdays and Saturdays, nine to one mm -hmm. or Thursdays, three to seven. And literally that produce has only traveled 30 <laughs> yards. Nice. 30 yards. 
And again, there's no synthetic pesticides, right. herbicides, or fungicides. I mean, it's, I mean, we don't have this big farm equipment, you know, all this pollution that's put off by mm-hmm. equipment like that on a standard farm. We don't have any of that. But this whole process is done where literally when we bring the, the food to the farm stand, that is literally the third pair of hands to touch that produce. Wow. Uh, typical produce has actually been touched by at least 20 different pairs of hands. Wow. Along its transportation. So we have a local farm stand, the farm where our, our greenhouse is, uh-huh. as well as we're now going to the Gilbert Farmers Market. We're also at the Old Town Scottsdale Market. Nice. We're also going to be in the Uptown Market. That's my and farmer's market. Soon, Yay. Yes. Yes. And you know, I just need to get uh, get a few loose ends that I'll talk to you later about. Perfect. Uh, tied up on that. Perfect. But yes, getting into the Uptown Market is exciting. So we'll have those four farmer's markets going and really being part of the community and bringing them this, this incredible whole food nutrition uh, with this produce that's been grown in a controlled environment. Wow. Fantastic. So I'm going to, I want to shift away from tower gardens now and true garden. And I have a few sure. questions for you. So can you talk about a time you failed, how you overcame that failure and what you learned? Well, you know, when I first started doing this, um, I, I really thought that, gosh, you know, more was, more was better. And what I'm talking about is water. So here is planting all these trays of seeds, uh-huh. seedlings, and I thought, gosh, the instructions say just keep a quarter inch of water in there. Ah, I'm going to be gone <laughs> at work all day. It's hot out. Yeah. And I thought, I'm just going to fill the tray up with water. What's the big deal? And I had um, about 4,000 seedlings that I had seeded that day. Uh-huh. And I had put all this water in there. And I couldn't understand why in the typical three, four days they weren't germinating. Right. I'm like, what's going on here? And so I started going back and looking at it and started looking at some of my seeds and they were rotting. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, my eyes, you know, again, anytime you plant something, if you give too much water, yeah, those seeds will start to rot. Right. I mean, I wasted 4,000 seed seedlings that day, you know, it was probably around 12,000 seeds depending on what I was planting. But that was one of my biggest failures because I thought more was better. And in this case, water can be <laughs> detrimental. So less is more. So anybody that's growing seedlings, yeah, don't keep excess water in there. Quarter inch of water in your tray if is that. more than sufficient. Yeah. I mean, I was just, I could not believe it. <laughs> and uh, so I, I really, I mean, when you look at the cost of throwing away that amount of seed, oh, plus the time and energy like to do it. Yeah. Oh, yes. But I learned my, my lesson. Yeah. And if I can pass on anything to anybody, you know, when you're, when you're growing seeds and you're trying to propagate your own seeds, don't use, don't overwater them. Don't yeah. keep too much water in those trays. Perfect. Otherwise, those seeds will rot on you. Perfect. So what do you consider your biggest success? Josh, my biggest su- success, you know, I have, I have uh, patients that have had cancer. Uh, we work with cancer centers here, too, in town, providing mm-hmm. them, you know, different uh, produce that's just so incredible, dense in nutrition that... The part of this cancer center's protocol is to to have them juicing uh, kale and spinach and parsley. All right. But but patients that should have died 15 years ago mm-hmm. that are still alive today mm. because of what the what they're putting in their bodies. You know, our bodies. If we keep them healthy, keep the, the immune system really on on attention where it can go after these rogue cancer cells. Because we all have cancer cells. It's just a matter of keeping them under wraps. And uh, so my biggest success is seeing these patients that were written off by Western medicine Mm -hmm. as, you know what, we've done everything, you're stage four, you know, you have no more money uh, on your insurance, and they write you off. Yeah. These patients have gone to alternative doctors, they've turned to really looking at everything they put in their body, and they're still alive today. I mean, that's just just mind-boggling, because what we're taught in school is if you don't follow X, Y, Z, you die. Right. Well, the problem is you die even if you follow X, Y, and Z <laughs> in most cases. Mm-hmm. So why not seek out professionals, seek out lifestyles that change the, the nutritional makeup in your body and giving yeah. the body the ability to heal itself? I really believe if you give the body what it needs, it can heal itself. And I've seen it. I have living patients that should have died 15 years ago that actually have quality of life. I work with uh, pa- uh, patients that have... Um, uh, 
what is that, traumatic brain injuries that are still alive because of the whole new uh, whole food nutrition. They should have uh, should have just died years ago from the, the accident, be it a motorcycle accident, this young man, yep. Oliver, that's yeah, alive. I have, I have I mean, that book. What a testimony. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, that guy's opened up his own uh, uh, cafe downtown Phoenix now. It'll nice. be open here uh, in January. I mean, the guy is going on. He's living proof mm-hmm. proof that nutri- it starts with nutrition. Yeah. And the body can overcome it. And uh, those are the kind of success stories that I've seen as a result of just eating very, very healthy. What you put in your mouth. And it takes work. Yeah. And it is. What you yeah. put in and on your body will affect your health. Yeah. And I saw that even in my own kids, you know, with uh, it was reactive airway disease and it was mm-hmm. the things that were given them. So when I looked at my son 15 years ago, the pediatrician that I first started talking about didn't believe in antibiotics. He goes, you got to figure out what you're giving your son. Nice. And stop giving at him. Yeah. And because he was having ear infection upon ear infection upon ear infection. And so what we determined was, you know, every time we went to McDonald's back then, we <laughs> gave him those chicken McNuggets. Uh-huh. Well, it was par- partially hydrogenated oil. Yeah. He would start coughing after two bites. And what's ironic, you know, here we have a little five-year-old who can't even say the word partially hydrogenated oils. Yeah. But he knows what it looks like. We showed it to him. <laughs> and so everything in our, in our pantry that was in a box has partially hydrogenated oils in it. Right. So we're wondering why he starts coughing because we're loading the system up. We've eliminated that from his diet. And now he's 16. The, the, the health of, of his body has become so good, he hardly ever reacts now. Now we're starting to see that he reacts to these artificial sweeteners. And I know that's another story we could talk about. Yeah. But again, these artificial sweeteners aren't healthy for us either. Right. And so he's learned that he needs to stay away from that as well, that raw sugar would actually be better for him in the long run. Yeah. So because of my own kids, because of the things that they were exposed to as kids that we didn't know any better, that really put us on pursuit of this uh, trail to be as uh, organic or beyond organic, live as healthy as possi- possible mm-hmm. without pesticides yeah we, we can do it it takes a little uh, extra work it may cost us a little bit more but in the long run we're going to have our health and what's that worth to you the quality right. of life that's what we're all pursuing I mean, i've hit this 50 year old mark and i want quality of life and right. that's, that's why i'm gonna keep pursuing this yeah well i hear you i hear you i love this uh there was a, a ted talk by a 14 year old and um, i can't remember his name but what he said was You'll either pay for it now with organic food or you'll pay for it later at the hospital. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, again, we can put all this junk into our body now or and then we pay for it with yeah. who knows what type, what type of uh, anomaly or cancer or whatever we get or autoimmune issue. Yeah. I mean, so let's, let's train our kids. Let's have them grow in their own food. I don't care if it's raised beds, gardens, you know, towers, mm-hmm. uh, fruit trees. Let's get them eating their food that they're growing, and they're going to be healthier. Get it, make it a way of life. Yeah. I mean, my kids thought food was grown in the grocery store, but now they know different. <laughs> now they know different. They're, so they've been going. They, they embrace this. So, what drives you? I mean, I can tell you're passionate from this conversation, and I, and I know you as well in person. Um, but what drives you? What's your big why? You know, the fact that we all can be healthier than we are. But when people come in from the Midwest, you know, since we uh, have our urban farm and our compounding farm, it's in a retirement center Mm -hmm. area, we get a lot of these people from the Midwest who knows or who they remember. They remember what food used to taste like. Oh, yes. And they're in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. And so when they come and try our produce, they're like, wow, this is what it tasted like 50 years ago when we were farmers. Yeah. This is incredible. I mean, they're like, we can't get enough of this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so that really drives me. I mean, even the, in communities where people can't afford this food, our goal is to, to educate them, bring this food to the community so they can uh, afford it. And that's part of why we're doing the farmer's markets and going in certain areas where yeah. they can use their EBT and their WIC vouchers. Yep. Our goal is to educate the community, make them realize, yes, this food is affordable, and as a result, they're going to be healthier. So that's what drives me. I, I'm an educator just like you. Mm-hmm. I want people to realize they, too, can have an urban farm in their backyard, even if it's just a small little tower, some fruit trees, and a few little raised beds. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple, and they can sus- uh, sustain themselves, and they'll have much, much uh, qu- uh, higher quality of life as a result. That's Perfect. what drives me, Greg. Perfect. That's beautiful. So 
I'm all about education and I have to know, is there one book that's been most influential for you in your drive to urban farming? More of some of these movies that we've, um, that have come out, you know, Michael Pullen's in a couple of them, Uh uh, knives over forks, you know, here, my daughter's is studying to become a veterinarian. So they're having to study about poultry and meat is processed. And Mm -hmm. gosh, Greg, that'll, that'll turn me into a a vegetarian (laughs) quickly. No kidding. I studied with her. Um, it's more of, uh, of these these documentaries that have come out. Even in Minnesota, you know, we, my parents and grandparents and great grandparents were farmers. You know, we had a couple, two, three hundred acres in Minnesota. You know, our government said DDT was safe. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, they had commercials on TV trying to convince us it was safe. We'd be out in the fields as kids playing as they crop dusted. Mm-hmm. You know, they came and sprayed our community for mosquitoes. We're riding our bikes behind that. You know, I look at all the things that have occurred, and so when you look at our family dynamics, when you look at the health of my cousins and nephews, nieces and nephews, and those that are still on the farm, we've got mental health issues, you know, bipolar, memory issues. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a 50-year-old cousin that he starts to write a checkout and can't remember who she's writing the checkout to. Yeah. You know, we also have dementia, Alzheimer's. You know, we've been labeled as slow learners. But what's ironic is those of us that have gotten off the farm, we've stopped that from continuing. So we know it's an exposure. So when I look at my cousins that are still farmers, yeah. their kids, and their kids still have these issues because uh-huh. they're still on the farm. They're still using these potent chemicals. And and that's anything in life. It's that exposure to these things over and yeah. over again. It's not just a one-time thing. It's an exposure over and over again. Right. So that's what's really driving me to to utilize you know, natural products, soap and water, mm-hmm. neem oil, you know, the natural chrysanthemum right. blossom, pyrethrin, that's, I mean, using these products that aren't going to harm us, you know, DDT, gosh, I can't uh-huh. believe that, I, you know, we've, we've survived that. And, and now I see why we have all these issues. Right. And it's still used in other parts of the world, which is crazy. I know. Isn't that something? Yeah. I mean, we haven't even talked about, is it glyphosate? Yeah. Which, yeah, let's not even go there. I'm going to stop you. Let's yeah, not even go there. go there. So, another time we'll talk about that. There you go. So what final piece of advice do you have for our listeners? I really encourage our listeners to learn where their food comes from and know where their food comes from. You know, buy local, meet the farmer, be able to see their facility. Because a lot of farmers won't let you on their facility, won't let you even see their their how they're processed. I have an open door policy. Mm -hmm. We hope to have tours up and running. You know, again, we'll be charging for those tours because there's regulation since we're a commercial farm. But again, know where your food comes from. I mean, I'm sorry, but I don't consider food from Mexico Uh, certified organic as food I want to put in my body. Yeah, exactly. So buy local, support your local farmers. Gosh, invest in the tower, or create a little garden in your backyard, grow some food yourself, you'll see the difference. Does it take a little work? Yes. But you're going to be rewarded with a much higher uh, quality of life, be healthier in the long run. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today and sharing your experience. It's been great chatting with you. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time, Greg. I know you've got a lot on your plate. And (laughs) and I love what you're doing there with your urban farm there. I mean, it's an exciting time. And, you know, I look forward to to being a part of it down there as well. It is an exciting time. That's for sure. How can our listeners get a hold of you? Uh, Best way would be through our website, uh, www.truegarden.com. They can send us emails. um, You know, send us an email. Uh, What are you interested in? Gosh, where do you want to go with things? Um, that's that's probably going to be the best way to get perfect. hold of us. Perfect. Thank you for your time today, Troy. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining us on the Urban Farm Podcast. Would you like to grow your own healthy, organic food? Once you know the secrets, it's really quite simple. Imagine saving money at the grocery store, increasing your intake of organic whole foods, cultivating greater food security, and feeling more connected to the earth. Let Urban Farm U diffuse your gardening doubts in our upcoming free webinar, Gardening Unearthed. We will walk you through the seven key factors for growing your own healthy, organic food easily and without any hard labor. Just text the word GARDEN to 44222 to sign up for your free webinar or visit urbanfarm.org for more information. With the right knowledge in place, there's no such thing as a black thumb. 
Remember, that's GARDEN to 44222 to sign up for your free gardening webinar. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen three days a week for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.